uh, when it became apparent that the governor was going to veto at least at least the House version of the redistricting uh, bill, I thought well, here's a chance to perhaps influence it. Uh, not me directly, perhaps, but if you get some press coverage, you get a lot of people involved in that, and maybe we can influence this thing and let's get it done. Uh, I hope a little easier. It's a, anyone ever did a class schedule for school beginning knows how tough it is to make things work out numerically when you have a certain number you have to fit. But also, uh, the goal here is to get representatives that know the people they represent and vice versa. So they run into you at the grocery store and they can say, hey, Bugs, if, if I were a delegate, I don't plan on being, but if I were and they say, hey, we don't like what you did yesterday, well, that's a lot of pressure on me to maybe not do that. We, you know, that kind of direct contact with the people you represent. And I think the way to do that is you take the whole numbers that the population of every county justifies. My county has about 1.7. Raleigh has about 6.3. Whatever those end up being, though, and whatever that whole number is, the county gets that. If you're a county and it, you've got 4.4, then four delegates belong to that county. Within the county, you may want to redistrict. You may want to district those things. You have one person, one representative, one district. If you can do it, and you can do a lot of that, maybe all of it, but at least some of it. So you've taken the majority of representation, and it's it's not confusing. If the county's population justifies whatever whole number, that's what they're guaranteed to get within that county. Then you probably ask a county clerk, because they're the experts on these things, I and mean, every 55 of them around the state. How do we do this? How do we divide your county up to represent five or four or eight or 14? Only on the fractions or the decimals of whole numbers do we, do we play the numbers game and try to go across borders, whatever. If, in fact, it is 6.3 and 1.7, in Raleigh and Wyoming, the county I'm from, the county nearest me, then it's real easy. Wyoming gets one, Raleigh gets six, and one delegate represents both counties. And it even divides the population up. You know, it's, uh, we really get one and seven tenths because Raleigh's electing the other three tenths of that guy. You could break those up into precincts for the population, or you could let them represent both whole counties and make both counties a district and separate from the other districts in the county. However they want to do that, but most of the work's done simply by saying the counties get the whole number that they're allowed by population. One more thing that makes this difficult is you have this magic 100 number for the house. You've got to somehow make everything fit 100. If you've ever done mathematics things like that and you have that set number, it's hard to make it work without fractions. Someone may be doing this and say, you know what, if we could have 106, boy, it would have worked out so much easier. Well, do 106 then. That's the, neither the Constitution nor the courts have ruled that 100 is a magic number. We've had fewer many times in the state's history. We've had 106 fairly recently. You, in fact, what they're mandated to do is to make it work. One, based on population as close as you can within 5% of one person, one vote. Also, though, they're to take into consideration social and historic connections between the people who are that representative represents. They're also, you know, to make it as contiguous as possible. You can't wiggle, you know, along the highway and get a county up there or part of one. That's not what they're supposed to do. So let's do it. We have a chance in the House, maybe in both still, but for surely we have a chance in the House to do this right. I've come down. I hope to get a, a moment, a minute of the governor's time and a minute of the speaker's time. The speaker's going to meet with me sometime after lunch. The governor's office is calling back. They're going to give me a minute, but uh, we don't know when yet. But anyway, I'm here from 11 uh, till uh, 12 or 1 with a different meeting with the Association of Counties anyway, so it's time to walk down. Uh, one last question. I mean, what is the general feeling in Wyoming County in regards to the plan as it stands right now? Uh, not just in Wyoming. No one likes it. In fact, I haven't talked to anyone uh, that likes the way it's done anywhere I've been. In fact, I'm getting Facebook hits by the hundreds and hundreds about this. Uh, and I posted this on Facebook as well. And... Uh, Everywhere I stopped, I stopped in PAX and talked to a bunch of gentlemen at the corner, a little restaurant there in downtown PAX where I started on the second day, Fayette County, right on the Raleigh County line. Not a single person there liked what we've done. Not one. So maybe we have a chance, because of a technical flaw, to take a really quick look at this and do it again. Do it right. And then within the counties, you want to talk to county clerks. County clerks are experts. I know Mike Good in my county would be able, maybe off the top of his head, to tell you how it should be divided up. If not, give him a little bit of time and he could do it. And, and there's experts everywhere on the, what's legal and what's not and as far as the Constitution and courts go. Prosecutor in my county, Rick Staten, was a majority leader for a while. He knows about these things, but that's not just in my county. It's everywhere. 
you know, get a few of those people together, get you a good mathematician, and get this done. That's what I hope happens.